Proverbs, uh, some of the smaller books. Uh, and you would think Jonah belonged to them. Actually, it's very old. It goes back to perhaps even before or during the Babylonian exile. And so Israel has known generations of prophets. Isaiah, Jeremiah, uh, Ezekiel, Micah, Amos. And this is, if you will, a satire on the experience of a prophet. God calls the prophet. And what does the prophet do? He goes off and prophesies. No. What's he do? I gotta get out of here. Right? Okay. Now, you have been taught this story, our children have been taught this story, that it's about Jonah and and what? The whale. Not about Jonah. It's a small part of the story. This is really a story about God and God's, God's nature, God's character. Now, choir, I'm going to ask you to stand <coughs> as best you can and turn and face the congregation. You, you're my substitute children here. Okay? <laughs> and uh, I, I handed out sheets today with uh, certain things on them that are parts of God's character. Would you hold up your sheets? Okay? That means you, and, and hold them, to turn them around so, so that everybody can see. Okay? Okay? So, so we have over here that God creates, God hears and sees, ascending God, a loving God, thank you, a healing God, a calling God and a saving God. Okay. This novella, who speaks first in the story? You can sit down. I, I didn't want you to miss that wonderful sheets, you know. Who speaks first in this story? Who speaks first, Nancy? Who, who speaks first? Verse 1. God, God calls Jonah, right? God calls Jonah. He is the first word. And when we get to the last word, guess who has the last word? God. So as we continue to go through this story, I want you to just listen to Jonah and everything that he tries to do, everything that happens to him. But also attune your ears to what God is doing and what the story is telling us about God. For instance, God calls, Jonah gets on a boat, and there's a storm. What does that tell you about God? Don't run away from this. Don't run away from this God. He is going to find a way to get your attention. Um, what's it say that when the Jonah hit the waves. The what? God is in control of this. Yeah. In ways that might be surprising to you. Okay. Then Jonah, uh, Jonah prayed to his God in the belly of the fish. He prayed in trouble, deep trouble. I prayed to God. He answered me. From the belly of the grave I cried for help, and you heard my cry. You threw me in it. <laughs> you threw me into ocean's depths, into a watery grave. With ocean waves, ocean breakers crashing over me, I said I have been thrown away. Thrown out, out of your sight. I'll never again lay eyes on your holy temple. Ocean gripped me by the throat. The ancient abyss grabbed me and held tight. My head was all tangled in seaweed at the bottom of the sea where the mountains take root. I was as far down as a body can go. And the gates were slamming shut behind me forever. Yet you pulled me up from that grave alive, oh God, my God. When my life was slipping away, I remembered God, and my prayer got through to you made it all the way to your holy temple. 
Those who worship hollow gods, god frauds, walk away from their only true love. But I'm worshiping you, God, calling out in thanksgiving. And I'll do what I've promised to do. Salvation belongs to God. Then God spoke to the fish and it vomited up Jonah on the seashore. Saves. Saves. One of the primary characteristics of God. We have a calling and sending God for Jonah. We have a saving God. Thank you. A saving God. What else did you notice about that prayer? Roll, roll through the slides again. You 
he pulls him up. Uh, he, he asks for that, and he pulls me up from that grave alive. Right? Go, go to the next one. I remember God. My prayer got through you. Now, I don't know if you realize this. The early church laid hold of this part of the Jonah story as a way to find an Old Testament parallel for the resurrection. See you want? Yeah. In the Psalms and in this prayer, a connection is made between the need for salvation and praise and the fulfilling of a vow. What's, what's the last slide today?
famous and obscure leaders and followers. When the message reached the king of Nineveh, he got up, got off his throne, threw down his royal robes, dressed in burlap, which was a sign of mourning, you see, uh, sat down in the dirt. Then he issued a public proclamation throughout Nineveh, authorized by him and his leaders. Not one drop of water, not one bite of food for man, woman, or animal, including your herds and flocks. Dress them all, both people and animals, in burlap. I want that image to sink in. All of their animals dressed in burlap. And send up a cry for help to God. Everyone must turn around, back from an evil life and the violent ways that stain their hands. Who knows? Maybe God will turn around and change his mind about us. Quit being angry with us and let us live. God saw what they had done. That they had turned away from their evil lives. He did change his mind about them. What he said he would do to them, he didn't. Jonah was furious. He lost his tem temper. He yelled at God. God, I knew it when I was back home. I knew this was going to happen. That's why I ran off to Tarshish. I knew you were sheer grace and mercy. Not easily angered. Rich in love and ready at the drop of a hat to turn your plans of punishment into a program of forgiveness. So God, if you won't kill them, kill me. I'm better off dead. God said, what do you have to be angry about? Now here we make a jump. Jonah goes and off to sulk. He finds a, a little palm tree, kind of, to sit underneath. And he sits there and sulks long enough, and eventually God makes the sun beat down on this thing so it withers the leaves, and so Jonah is just, you know, made to suffer even more out of this furious at God. And then God says, What? Should I not be concerned about Nineveh, that great city in which there are more than 120,000 persons who do not yet know right from wrong, let alone all the innocent animals. And those are the last words. Now what strikes you about Jonah? our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. First John. What else? Yeah, Jonah, Jonah would have been much happier if they'd have ignored him. You know, he wanted to see uh, Sodom and Gomorrah reenacted, re you know. Yeah, he wanted to be up in the hill watching that. He got robbed of his chance. You know. Tip. How about that? Nice insight. Did you hear what Jim said? He said even though Jonah was God's messenger, he really didn't believe the message. Actually, you know, there's something interesting about that as an association. The, the, pure, the, the efficacy of the sacraments does not depend on the purity of the priest. That's, that's old Catholic doctrine. You know, that a 
It's not about who's doing it. It's about what's going on here. Kind of a little the same thing. How does this rub you? How does this rub you? What are the limitations of your love for people out there? Where does it end? Are there people out there that you fear and hate? That you would be scandalized if, uh, if the church found a way to relate to them? Thank you. 